Um, hello everyone, welcome along to this webinar presented by Charter Prime. My name is Stuart McPhee and it's my pleasure to be with you here uh, this evening for this webinar on risk management. Um, just seem to have some issues getting going then, but I think we're okay, we're okay now. Um, if this is your first time ever using uh, the GoToWebinar platform, and that's what we're using for this seminar or this webinar tonight, you would have, uh, when you logged in, you would have had access to a little control panel for that GoToWebinar. And in that you should see a chat or a questions window. And in there you're able to directly ask me questions during the session. Um, and I'll, I'll keep track of those as we go, uh, go this evening. And any questions that pop along and are relevant to what I'm talking about, I'll certainly address those. And we certainly will have a Q&A uh, session towards the end as well. So if you do have any questions tonight, uh, it'd be, be great if you're able to share those with us and I'll do my very best to find some time um, to answer those during the session or towards the end. And one other note I should add is it's great to see actually so many people in uh, the webinar tonight. So thank you for those who have taken the time to register and also attend uh, this evening, as I said, it's great to have your company. So thanks for joining us. So what I'm talking about tonight in this uh, webinar is how to manage risk like a professional. Now, this is not a two or a three hour presentation uh, today. It's really just a quick overview of certain things that I think are, think are important for traders to master when it comes to trading well. And risk management is an incredibly important topic. And sometimes I don't think it gets the credit it doesn't get the focus that a lot of other topics get. You often hear people talk about uh, strategies and conducting analysis and you know reading the market and doing different things to get them into trades. But of course, managing risk is all very much about managing that capital, managing the size of trades, and of course, what you do once you're in the trade with regards to exiting and closing the trade. So sometimes it doesn't get the sort of focus that it really needs. But my webinar tonight, really just want to give you a quick overview of certain things that I think are critical in order to trade well. And as I said, how to manage risk, just like professional traders do. So hopefully you enjoy uh, that session on that topic. Now, I'm not going to read out um, every single word uh, in this disclaimer. I'm sure this is freely available from Charter Prime at any time, but I will just highlight a couple of things uh, if I may. And I'll just grab my pen here. Um, one of the first things that I think is really, really important here is anything that I say in this presentation is for information purposes only. Under no circumstances this evening am I uh, providing you advice or telling you specifically what you should be doing. It is purely for information purposes only um, and you just need to be well uh, aware of that. So anything I talk about tonight is just purely information and what you choose to do with that information is completely up to you. If you have any questions about the disclaimer and its contents, please don't hesitate to ask, or please don't hesitate to contact Charter Prime after this webinar for more specific information about what this disclaimer um, includes. Well, without any delay, let's just get straight into the webinar presentation this evening again. Um, and good to see more and more people joining us. I'm just tracking the attendee numbers uh, in this webinar. And if you've only just joined us a few minutes ago, it's a very warm welcome to you and thanks very much for joining us. And one thing I did say is you will have access to a little chat or questions uh, window in your little control panel for GoToWebinar. In there, you should be able to ask me any questions uh, you wish and I'll do my very best to respond to those uh, during the webinar this evening. So this is my three M's of trading. Now, I must admit, I, I really didn't come up with the idea of the three M's of trading. I remember uh, Dr. Alexander Elder many, many, many years ago, probably before I even got into trading myself, uh, spoke about the three different M's. And I know Dr. Van Tharp, a very famous psychologist, uh, someone who's been in the trading industry for over 40 years, an American who spends a lot of time with traders and uh, counselling them and helping them with the psychology side of things. He also talks about three different components of trading. Now, he actually uses different words 
to these, he'll talk about money being risk management. He'll talk about method being a method you being a sort of strategy or your system, and he'll use psychology for mindset. But I use the three M's because I think it's easy to remember. The three M's, the money, method, and mindset. And we're gonna talk about one of these components tonight, and that is the money side of things and how we manage our exposure to risk. But just before I go ahead and start doing that, what I talk about with this slide here is these three M's and really all of these three M's go towards you having a trading plan that you can implement and execute and put into place in the market with great confidence and with great discipline and with great decisiveness, right? Having a trading plan that you have great confidence in and that when that plan tells you to do something, you do it. And when that plan tells you not to do something, you also not do that as well. So really to me, the real key to trading, and we can talk about all sorts of words we throw out like, oh, be disciplined and not too emotional and everything else. But really one of the starting points with this whole journey that we're on trying to work out something that is gonna work for us, really the starting point is you convincing yourself of the importance of having a trading plan. Now I know I have spoken in front of many, many people over the years and stood on stage and spoken to people. I've also had the pleasure of actually talking one-on-one -on -one with must be thousands of traders over the years. And I'm firmly convinced of one thing. And I'm firmly convinced that most people who trade don't have a trading plan. Just, just don't. I'm not saying they don't know what they're doing. They generally have an idea of what they're doing, but they certainly don't have a plan that they can fall back onto and have great confidence in executing, you know, and executing and following rules and, and applying a strategy. They, they just don't. And that's why I'm telling you now, right from sort of minute one, it's just so critical. And as I say there, it's imperative. It's so imperative or critical that you actually do develop a plan that's right for you. And then you implement that or execute that plan with the right mindset and with that discipline and confidence and decisiveness and all those other character attributes that we can talk about uh, later. And certainly the presentations uh, I'll be doing in Malaysia in a couple of weeks, in two weeks time, you know, we'll be talking about these particular topics in far greater detail. Uh, as I said, tonight's really just an overview, but hopefully that's, maybe hopefully the first thing you take away from tonight is absolutely critical Job number one, right from the start, is telling yourself that yes, this is something I need to do, um, and you know, hopefully things uh, flow on from there. I'll just break down these three areas just quickly, and then obviously then we'll focus in on the rest of the session. We'll focus in on the money side of things and managing the risk. And again, it seems like even more people have joined us in the last five minutes. So if you've just joined us in the last few minutes, Stuart McPhee is my name, and it's uh, great to have you on. It's a warm welcome to you. Thanks for being here. So just quickly on the method, before we talk about the money and the method, the mindset, and then we'll talk more specifically about managing risk. Uh, to me, the methodology is just the strategy. It's just the, you know, how do we, you know, let me just bring up um, MT4 for, for to starters. So just wait for a second for that to come across on your screen. So, you know, to me, and again, we'll talk about this in far greater detail in other webinars in the future and other uh, live seminars that I'll do uh, in the future with Charter Prime. but just as an example, you know, if I just zoom in right here, so this is the euro dollar, this is the euro against the United States dollar, this is a daily chart of that currency pair. You know, when it comes to the methodology, all we are trying to do is look at the right hand edge of screen, and hopefully you can see my mouse there right at the right hand edge. All we're trying to do is work out what is most likely to happen next. What is most likely? What is the most probable? outcome, what's most likely to happen. That's all we're trying to do with any form of analysis, whether it be technical analysis, fundamental analysis, a combination or something else, all we're trying to determine is what is most likely to happen. And if we can with some confidence determine what is most likely to happen, we can speculate on that opportunity and we speculate by opening a trade. That's what we do. We think the most likely outcome is this, therefore I'm gonna to try to take advantage of that. And I'll do that by speculating, by opening a trade, managing my risk and see what happens. That's all we're trying to do, isn't it? So we'll come back to that in a second, but 
all we're trying to do is have a, a process for entering the market. That's what methodology is all about. I should also tell you right from the outset, I'm a technical analyst through and through. That's all, that's all I do. Um, most of my time now in the markets is trading currencies and a much lesser extent or a lot lesser extent is, um, is trading stocks, but most of my time is taken up from currencies. And I am the first to you know, admit that the currency market can be very news driven. Um, however, I also, I also strongly believe in, you know, and have a lot of confidence in looking at things like this and looking at charts um, of the various currency pairs and indices and, you know, gold and the like. So um, I am a technical analyst. I thought I'd just come out and tell you that right from the outset. So we're all very clear uh, about where I sit in all this. Okay, next, just quickly, the money, and this is what we'll focus on a lot more tonight, um, and that's how we allocate capital. I'll certainly talk about reward to risk, and I think that's in incredibly important in tonight's webinar. And if you don't want to learn a lot of things tonight, I hope you learn a couple of things. I hope you learn two or three that are important, but one of them I hope is reward to risk. And I hope you take away the things that I talk about tonight and what professional traders do, and how we manage risk and how we always assess reward to risk. It is such a critical component of having a system or having a trading plan with a positive expectancy, where the expectation is a positive outcome. So, so critical. Um, and I really wanna talk about that in a little bit of detail uh, shortly. And finally, the of the three Ms, uh, the mindset. So this is the psychology, this is everything in your head, in your brain. And obviously this is the item that determines how well we follow other things. So we have a great trading system. We have a great setup and entry, uh, a set of rules that we follow to enter trading opportunities. And we have really good rules to, to cut losses and set our stops and also have trailing exits or set targets or however we do it. And it could be the greatest trading plan ever created. However, if we don't have that psychology working for us and the mindset correct, then obviously things will uh, go awry and things will go amiss and things just don't work the way they should simply because this is clearly the most important part of it all. And that is the six inches in between your ears. And that is of course your mind and your psychology and the like. So that's just a quick overview of the three M's. I just thought I'd uh, provide you my own perspective on those items. And you know, having a good method, a good trading system is important. Uh, managing risk is really, really important. And then the psychology is important, of course. Um, but we'll talk this evening a little bit more about managing risk. So let's get started on that particular area. Again, if you have any questions, uh, there haven't been any come through from what I've seen, but if you do have any, please don't hesitate to ask. There will be a dedicated Q&A session uh, towards the end of the session uh, as well. So, Let's just break down this trading plan thing for a moment. Look, many, many years ago, um, I was conducting a lot of one-on-one -on -one personal coaching. I would drive around to people's homes and go in and sit with them at their trading desk in their office and talk about, um, you know, talk about trading and try to help them with their trading and help them with their analysis or managing risk or, you know, putting together a trading plan. I, I would do a lot of that. And I know from that experience and having spoken to many traders over the years at various trading events and expos and the like, I know that a lot of people say, I don't have a trading plan. I believe I need one, right? I don't have one, but I believe that I do need one. I, I, I do think it's important to have one, but I just don't have one, but I'm very overwhelmed. I'm very daunted by the prospect of putting a trading plan together. I just don't know how I can do it, how I can put a plan together. I, I know I want one and I know I need one, but I just can't do it. I think it's just too overwhelming. It's too difficult uh, to, to, you know, to put something like that together. But what I wanna do is just break down really what a trading plan uh, should do. Just uh, bear with me for a moment, please. Let's just simplify this a little bit. What I believe is your trading plan should answer three questions. That's it, three questions. The first question is, under what conditions 
do we enter a trade? Under what conditions do I enter a trade? Number two is how big is that trade going to be? How much money do I allocate to that trade? How big is the trade going to be? How many uh, lots or contracts or options or CFDs or units or stock or whatever it might be? How big is that trade? Right? How do I determine how large that trade size is? And then thirdly is, of course, under what conditions do we get out of that trade? How do we exit or close that trade, whether it be in a profitable position or in a losing position? Let me say that again. How do we get in, how much money do I commit, and how do I get out? Those three questions form the basis of a trading plan. Now, if you were to ask me which of those three are the most important, I would actually reverse the order. I believe how you get out is most important. I believe how much money you commit to the trade is second. And in third place is how do you get in? So the two questions that I believe are the two most important, I believe are related to managing risk. Two out of the three most important questions your trading really answers all relates to managing risk. That's how important managing risk is. So point number one there I say about, look, I understand the mindset is important. I get the psychology of it. I totally understand that. But if we take that away and just look at the decisions that we make as traders, the, the really, really important decision, decisions we make, decisions we make are related to managing risk. That's how important it is. Um, I, I often say a poor entry can be saved by a good exit. However, this is the really important bit. A really, really, really good entry can be completely messed up by a poor exit. So a poor entry can be saved we can get in for all the wrong reasons. I'll just bring up a chart of the uh, Euro again. I'll just narrow this down to an hourly chart. Um, you know, perhaps we, we're gonna buy this because we think it's a bit of rally in here, even though the you know overall trend over the last, what, last few weeks now, almost last month in the Euro has been clearly down from 114 now, you know, struggling to keep above support at 111. So it's having a 300, pitfall or so in the last month or so, clearly overwhelming trend is down and we narrow down our focus and we go, oh, there's a little rally here. Maybe it'll keep going higher. Um, now, I personally, and you'll you'll learn this a little bit more as I talk more about my own trading strategy in, you know, in other webinars and other live seminars, but this is not a long position I would take any anytime soon. I, I wouldn't be looking to buy the euro right now personally, um, simply because of the overwhelming downtrend. Um, if I was to look at this, I think there's a reasonable expectation. In fact, I'll just draw in a support level here at 111 because I think, um, make that exactly 111, because if I zoom out uh, a little bit more, you can see, you know, in the last several months, how that level at 111, and I just need to know, I, I need to wait a little bit for that sort of um, screen to get through to you and hopefully that will happen pretty quickly. Um, I know the support level of 111 has been pretty strong and I, you know, there's a reasonable expectation that in the near future, it'll probably retest that 111 level again. So I'm certainly not looking to go long right this second. So I would think that's, it's not a horrible entry. It's not the worst entry I could possibly take, but just for the purposes of this, um, just particular topic, I would say going long right now isn't the best. But what I can do though, is if I was to go long now at 111.40, I could put a little simple stop loss down here at 1.11.30 you know, or 1.11.20 or even just below this recent level here down at 1.11.10. I could put a stop 30 pips away and this poor entry can be saved by just having a really good solid exit in place. And I put my exit down here, you know, somewhere down here at 1.11.11, something like that, oh, a little bit further down, you know, a 30 pip stop, that's it. And so whatever happens after that, I'm saved, right? It could be the worst entry, but it's saved by just having a good solid exit in place. Um, and that's what I mean by, you know, a poor entry can be saved by a good exit. But the really important thing is you can, and I've done this, and anybody who's traded has done this, and I've done this too many times years ago, so I understand this, and that is you can have really, really good entries and completely make a mess of them.
And there's so many reasons why we do that. And I don't have time tonight to go through all those reasons, but there's so many reasons why we make messes of really good entries. That's again, why getting out is so much important than getting in. Uh, 8228, I'll talk about in just a second. Average loss, average profit, I'll talk about that uh, a little bit later as well when I talk about reward to risk. And really to me, you know, risk management all boils down to managing our capital and our trading capital and our account size, determining each individual trade size and how much money we commit to different trades, and then obviously managing our exits, both in a profit and in a losing position. Just wait for that screen to come through to you. I noticed the screens are just taking a little bit of time to come through to you, which is unfortunate. I am using PowerPoint here, as you've probably worked out. Hopefully that'll get through, through to you just a second. And even more people have joined us in the last uh, 10 minutes. So thank you for those who have joined us and uh, a warm welcome to you. Um, thanks for joining the webinar this evening, just while I wait for that screen to, uh, to come through. Um, this particular slide is, is just purely hypothetical. Um, this is simulated trades. Um, I'll just go back. There we go. Um, the, this is simply a simulated, purely hypothetical results, nothing real here, but it could actually mirror somebody's actual trading. So all I've got here is the results of 10 hypothetical trades. So across the middle here, we've got trades one through to 10, and the profit or loss in each of those trades is represented by an amount above that zero line or below the zero line. And what we've done is we've started with an account balance of $20,000. Now trade one, we made 10%, which meant our account balance after trade one went up to $22,000. Trades two, three and four also made 10%. So after trade four, our account balance is now a little bit short of $30,000. Now trade five was a losing trade and we lost in that particular trade, single trade, we lost 50% of our money in that trade alone. So our account balance was um, affected accordingly. However, trade six, seven, eight and nine, we actually made money again and we made 10% again, um, which brought our uh, account balance back up to above our starting point. So we're now back above $20,000. However, trade 10, we also lost again, and we also lost 50%. So now after 10 trades, our account balance is a little bit above half of where we started. But if we break this down a little bit further, and it's, it should be obvious to you, but I need to highlight it. I've just simulated the results of 10 trades. However, eight of those 10 trades were winning trades, were profitable, they actually made money. Eight of them, eight out of 10, 80% strike rate. Now, if I was to you know, tell you I, I have a strike rate of 80%, 80% of my trades I get right, I think you'd be impressed. I'd be impressed. It just sounds fantastic, almost unachievable. And yet, in this scenario here, I have only lost, <clears throat> excuse me, I've only lost, um, you know, two trades out of 10, and yet I've only got half the money that I started with. So this is my 8228 scenario that, and what I'm trying to get into your mind, and certainly the risk management presentation I'll do in a couple, in two weeks time in Malaysia live, where I actually talk about risk management, I'll go into this in far more detail. We'll also go into a lot more detail about how to set these stops and, and what have you. Um, but you know, this is the 80% strike rate, um, profitable trades, yet we've got, you know, we've lost half our money. Um, it really just shows you, and it's a simple phrase, but it's really, really important. <clears throat> it's not how often you get it right and wrong that really matters or counts. It's not how often you get it right or wrong. It's what happens when you get it right and wrong, All right? So it's not, how, it's not how often you get it right or wrong, it's what happens when you get it right or wrong. So we've only got it wrong twice out of 10, but what happened when we get it wrong? <clears throat> Excuse me, we lost half our money, half our money, and now with an 80% strike rate, we've only got you know half our money left. Um, that to me just highlights the importance of 
uh, risk reward and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Here's another scenario to consider as well. All I've done is I've taken that previous slide. So we've got the same results. Trades one, two, three, and four have been 10% gains. So we're up nicely near 30,000. However, trade five has been a significant 50% loss and we're back down here. But what I've said here is after you know trade six, seven, eight, we're making small gains of 10% of time. And what I'm trying to get at here is when you have a significant loss like this, it can take some time to get that back. That's really what I'm getting at. It can take a lot of time to get that back. Not only does it damage your account balance, you know, the amount of money in your account, what this doesn't show, this graphic doesn't show, is the psychological impact, the impact on your confidence, the impact on your emotion. It doesn't show that at all. And, you know, one of the things that I often say, and, you know, if I do this in a live seminar and I'm standing in front of people just like yourselves, and I'll say, you know, who has ever had a really, really big loss, much bigger than they wanted? And anybody who has traded should put their hand up because we've all been through that. Every single person. I, I wouldn't know of any exceptions who hasn't done that. And, and the point being is it happens and it happens early on when we're inexperienced and we don't manage and respect risk as much as we should. Maybe we become a little bit too greedy. It happens to every single one of us. But the, the sooner, the quicker you can eliminate these type of trades and these types of losses from your trading, um, the better off you're going to be. It, it's that simple. Um, now, that comes down to other things like, you know, how do we set those stops and the, and the discipline to follow through and, and those sorts of things. But that's all part of the learning process, obviously. But we need to, as best we can, completely eliminate, completely eliminate those as possibilities. And I think you'll probably uh, agree with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And one more thing I wanted to talk about with this, and again, this, you know, this I've seen this happen. Uh, this is a bit of the reality of things. And let me just explain this slide just for a moment. Let's say we start with, uh, let me just draw in here. Let's say we start with ten thousand dollars. You choose your currency. Make it US for sake of argument. Okay, so ten thousand dollars. And if you lose ten percent of that ten thousand dollars, your account balance is now only nine. And to return your account balance back up to where you started, $10,000, you only need to make 11% on that $9,000 to return it to 10. And so the difference between 10 and 11 isn't a lot. Therefore, it doesn't seem like that big a problem. But as you can see, as we go further down that table, the gap widens significantly, and this becomes a major issue for people. Even if we only lose 20%, so now we've gone from 10 down to 8,000, you only need to make 25% on that 8,000 to get it back to the 10,000. But of course, my point being is as we go further down here, the gap between these numbers separates significantly, exponentially. So this $10,000, if you lose 90% of your capital, you now only have $1,000 if you need to make 900% to get it back to 10. The key being, that certainly when we are starting out, we are not very good at managing risk. I don't think I'm gonna surprise anyone by saying that, uh, nor offend anybody. That's, that's just the way it is. We don't totally understand how important it is to manage risk and take care of that. Um, so what usually happens, of course, is when we do start out, we do in fact incur losses. Um, and the important thing to realize is when we start to lose, we can start to take additional risk because we become desperate to make that money back. Now, how do I know this? Well, because I've spoken to a lot of traders over the years, but more importantly, because I've done this myself. <laughs> that, that's why, because 20 plus years ago, this was me. Um, and that's exactly what I was doing. I'd lose some, I'd try to make it back. I still vividly remember times when I lost a lot and I did some stupid things to try to make it back. I, at the time, I didn't think it was stupid. I thought I was being aggressive. I thought I was being smart. I thought, you know, my time had come to, to get some luck and for things to work out for me. And of course, it resulted in only losing more and more money. I look back now and realize how stupid it was, but at the time, I didn't think it was. I thought I was doing all those things for the right reasons. 
again, any questions, there hasn't been any come through just yet, but of course I am here to help you. Um, so please feel free uh, to ask any questions as you see fit and I'll do my very best uh, before we finish here to respond to those. So I've got another, another thing I want to talk about with reward to risk and how much we make and how much we lose. But I just want to talk about these few things as well. Um, I really want to get across to you that strike rate is not as important as getting our key performance numbers right. So I'm not going to talk about the key performance numbers in this session. I do talk about it in the, in the longer, um, more detailed risk management live seminar that I'll be doing in two weeks. Um, so I will certainly talk about those key performance numbers, but they're the things that are much more important than strike rate. And it's important to recognise that, you know, when I talk about strike rate, I'm talking about percentage of profitable trades. What percentage of your trades actually result in a profit? That's what I mean by strike rate. Uh, so if only half of your trades are right, then it's obviously 50%. And what I want to just get across to you is that uh, having a strike rate of 50% doesn't sound that impressive, but it's actually reasonably good. Having a strike rate of 60%, 6-0, is actually starting to get very good. 65, 70% is really, really, really good, getting close to excellent. Having a strike rate of 70% is very, very, very good. Um, but let's just go back to 50. 50 is quite good. Um, and it's not unrealistic to expect to have an outcome or have an expectation of having a strike rate of 50%. But the important thing is, and this is the really important bit I wanna get across in the next slide. The really important thing is, you don't need to have a strike rate of 50% to make money. You don't. So what we often do is we focus on, I must get a high strike rate. I must get at least 50%. I want 60 or 70. You don't need to. And it can be an unnecessary focus. And we can spend way too much of our time trying to find a system or a set of rules that'll actually yield that. Because it is a lot more difficult than you would think. Um, I can tell you that from experience. So strike rate is less important than you think than actually just having those key performance numbers, the reward to risk relationship in place and having all those other things working for you. So as I say, there, there you go, risk reward. Um, is a little bit more important than the strike rate itself. I've talked about the big losses can certainly affect, um, certainly affect your account balance, your equity curve, but what's not written in that graphic is how it can affect you emotionally and strip you of confidence and really get you back to square one and really starting again, unfortunately. Um, I talk about consistency a lot when I talk about developing in, other, in another seminar about developing your trading strategy and putting all those rules in place and, and one of the sessions I actually tell you about one of my strategies, I'm very open about it. In fact, speaking of being open, um, 15, 20 years ago, I was incredibly protective of my trading rules. I thought it was, I'd worked so hard and lost so much money to get to that point of having confidence in certain rules and knowing what worked and what didn't work. And there was a time I didn't tell anybody, I was very, very protective. And, uh, and I'm just being quite personal here, in the last five or 10 years, I've become a lot more open um, and sharing um, sharing my rules and what I use to the point now where I actually just tell you um, quite specifically how I do things. So that's certainly, I won't be doing that tonight, but certainly in the live sessions uh, in two weeks time, I'll certainly be very open about my currency trading strategy. Um, um, but the key is with that is very much consistency and that is doing the same thing over and over again. Um, but again, that's a topic for another day. Um, just want to spend some time on this particular um, this particular slide as well. So what I'm getting at here is trying to get you to understand the relationship between reward to risk and strike rate. And all I've done here again is this is very hypothetical results. So these aren't real, uh, very hypothetical. I've just simulated some numbers here. So the first column here has different strike rates from 10 to 100%. That is for 200 trades, the strike rate. In other words, 10 means 10% 10 of all the trades resulted in a profit, all the way down to 100%. So those percentages are then represented in the win and the loss column. So these are profitable trades, these are losing trades. Therefore, for the 10% column here, or the 10% uh, row here, that means for 200 trades, 20 of those trades were profitable 
and 180 of those were losing trades. Now, the most important part of this, this entire table is this column right here, and that is the reward to risk. That is the most important part and the real important lesson I want you to take away from this particular webinar. Reward to risk is something you need to be well aware of, understand how it fits into your strategy, and make sure you are consistent in looking for certain levels of reward to risk. This to me is so critical in actually making money. Um, and it's not often talked about, unfortunately. We talk, well I don't, but a lot of people talk um, a lot about you know developing a strategy and I'll look for this signal and look for that setup and that indicator does that and what have you. But rarely do people actually talk about the nuts and bolts and the really critical components to making money over the long term, not just the next trade, but over the long term. And it's this particular topic here and that's reward to risk. And the far right hand column is, I guess, is important as well because we're talking about profit and how much mo actually money we've made after these 200 trades. And what I've done to represent profit is this letter called R, R for Romeo. And this Romeo represents a unit of risk. So the R is for risk. And each of us have a different risk amount. It's that amount of money we're prepared to put at risk when we open a trade. For example, if I was to take this Euro trade, you know, right now and go ahead and buy, you know, go long, um, go along a full lot or contract on the Euro, um, I've now got a certain amount of risk in place. But for some others, that may be too much. So we obviously can be in a position where we can reduce that risk. We can reduce the size of our trade. Therefore, the risk that we now have in place or at risk, the amount of money we now have at risk is different. And again, this is a topic for another day. It's very much related to risk management, but I don't have really the time to go in great specifics. But you know, question number two of your trading plan is how much money do we commit to the trade? Incredibly important. Um, and related to that is of course, where do we put our stop? Again, incredibly important. And I'll be talking about that in the live session uh, in two weeks time. But each of us have a different unit of risk, a different amount of money we are prepared to risk when we put each trade on. For someone it might be $50, for someone else 100, it could be 1,000, it could be 5,000, but we all have a different amount. And what we're getting at here is this, this R here represents that amount of money for that person. But the real key column here is the reward to risk. And what I'm getting at here, and let's just go a little bit more, real, li, more bit more realistic. Let's go here to a strike rate of 50%, therefore 100 and 100. The key is this, when we actually make money, those 100 trades we made money, we made two times or double the amount when we actually lost money. Our reward was two times the risk. So if we were risking every single trade, we were risking $500, we were extracting a profit of $1,000 every time we made money because it was two times one, two to one. And what that ends up meaning at the end of the 200 trades, we've actually made 100 times our unit of risk, for example, 100 times the $500. Um, so the key is a reward to risk. The important thing is here, we can have strike rates less than 50%, 40, 30, 20, 10%. But if we have the reward to risk working in our favour, we can still make money. That's what it boils down to. If you ever think about it in simple terms, if you are always risking $500 and you can achieve consistently a reward to risk of two to one, you can have a strike rate as low as 34%, a little bit over one third. You can have a strike rate of 34% and yet still make money. Strike rate of only 34%, yet you still make money. Why? Because your reward to risk is set up appropriately. Even when you have really, really high strike rates, if your reward to risk is not great, you may not make lots of money. You can have a strike rate as low as 10%. Now, this is very unusual. I should be quite open with you here. Achieving a reward to risk of 11 to 1 is a little bit unrealistic, but it's just for the numbers. You can have a very low strike rate as long as the reward to risk is in your favour. That's the real critical component of this entire slide, is understanding that reward to risk. And if I was to go back, um, what are we here with? Let's just look at something else. 
The Australian dollar might be an example. Let's look at the Australian dollar. I'll just zoom in for you as a simple example. If I was to go short now because it's bounced off, the 70.50 level with the Australian dollar has been quite significant. So I'll just uh, zoom out there. In fact, I just want, just need to wait for that screen to pop through for you. Just give that a second to come through. There you go, it looks like it's done that just now. So the second, the, the top red line there is 70.50. And I've for some time thought that was quite significant. You can see the number of times that the Australian dollar has bounced off that level. It did have an excursion down here, but a number of times it's bounced off. And then when it did break through, it has met resistance at that level uh, since then. So for example, if I was to go short here because it's bounced off that resistance at 70.50 and I expect it to retest the support down here at 68.50 again, Again, I just need to wait for that screen to just update for you. But if I was to take this level here at, uh, where are we now? At 69.60. And I can only foresee a potential profit down to this support level here at 68.50. That's a potential profit of 110 pips, 1.1 cents or 110 pips. I would need to set a stop in relationship to that 110 pips to ensure that I get the appropriate reward to risk. Now I might look at this trade now and think, ideally I would love to have my stop above this 7050 level to provide me some protection. But if I was to do that, I could potentially have a stop 100 pips away, yet my potential profit in the trade is only 110 pips. So we're only a little bit over one to one. Now, unless I'm getting a really, really high strike rate, that reward to risk in this particular trade may not add up. And that may result in you saying, I'm not prepared to take the trade because the reward to risk is not set up appropriately. It's not set up right. And I'm really taking way too much risk for the potential reward in this trade. And this is what good traders do so far as managing risk, managing reward to risk, and understanding the numbers and the really critical key performance numbers. As I said, I'll go through those in more detail uh, in the live sessions, because it is really important that you do, in fact, understand those. And what I've done is I've just highlighted, again, I just need to wait for that screen. Hopefully it'll update for you very, very shortly, just to let you know, I can actually see what uh, you're seeing. And it looks like for some of you, you're still seeing a chart of the Australian dollar, even though I've moved back to PowerPoint. So hopefully that'll get through uh, to you really, really soon. Um, for those who can see this slide, again, all, all we're really looking to is to get the reward to risk um, in the right in the right way about for us to ensure that we are, we do have trades set up in the best interest, in our best interest, to achieve the right ratio between those things. Um, what we don't want to be in a position of doing is constantly, you know, only getting profits of 10, 15, 20 pips, but every time that we're doing that, we're setting stops at 20, 30, 40 pips. So the potential reward is a lot less than the risk we are taking every single trade. Um, I notice uh, there has been some people experiencing some difficulty. Um, the supporters have said, you know, if you refresh your browser and um, hopefully it'll, um, if your screen does freeze and refresh that browser, it should actually fix that uh, for you, which would be great. So you can actually see what I'm looking at now. Uh, but the, the point I'm trying to make is that, um, you know, that strike rate in that percentage of profitable trades or winning trades is actually not as important as we think it is. And actually having that reward to risk and understanding how our strategy, you know, delivers that reward to risk to us and what sort of reward to risk it does actually have inherent to it, that to me is much, much more important than strike rate. And again, if you think back to day one of your trading, you know, imagine, again, I know this because I was there myself uh, many years ago when I was in this position. And, you know, imagine someone trying to teach you about trading and they say, oh, you know, when I trade over 100 trades, I only have 40 trades make money. My strike rate is only 40%. We're conditioned to thinking 50 is a bare pass. That's it. It's the minimum, right? 50%. And we should be looking at more, 60, 70, 80. You know, we go through school and think about grades and, you know, assessment and the like. And I, you know, someone says to you or I say to you, oh, my strike rate's only 40%. 
you probably think that trading system is horrible. Just not very good at all and not very professional. But the 40% strike rate doesn't actually tell you the reward to risk and the other key performance numbers. It doesn't tell you that. It doesn't tell you the average profit. It doesn't tell you the average loss. And they're the more important things so far as the you know whole expectancy and the profitability of that trading system. They're the much more important things. So again, they're the things that we can talk about in greater detail in two weeks time. Um, when I, you know, we go around Malaysia and do a few of these live sessions talking about risk management and the like. Well, that is uh, approaching my sort of 45 minute mark uh, for this particular session. Um, so it doesn't look like an, that I've just been going through the chat log and then it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be any actual questions that have come through, but now is your time. I'm gonna hang around um, for a little while yet to actually respond to any of your questions. Um, and if you just need time to have a think about those or type those out, I'll certainly be here uh, to respond to those. I'll just quickly uh, go forward a little bit whilst you are actually having a think about some of those questions. Um, obviously we're here tonight with Charter Prime and um, you know, the really important things for me with Charter Prime is some of the things they pride themselves on and that is transparency and trust. And I know because I've been trading for many, many years now, transparency is very important um, for a broker that you choose, but also, you know, having trust in that broker and, you know, having that confidence that they're going to deal with you in an appropriate uh, manner and treat your money safely and do all the right things as government regulators ensure that they do. Um, you'll notice that Charter Prime is registered in a number of different um, regions, including ASIC, the Australian Securities and Investments Commission, yeah, in Australia, which is certainly one of the more stringent, strict regulators around. So Charter Prime is um, registered and regulated and has a license with ASIC. Just wanted to share with you, uh, I've, I've hinted at this a little bit uh, during the session, but uh, in two weeks time, I'll be doing a number of live sessions with Charter Prime, talking about a number of different topics. Um, one of them is, in fact, developing a trading strategy. I will be talking about risk management in much more detail than I did tonight. I'll talk specifically about how we can position uh, size, how we size our trades, how we set stops. Do we take profit? Do we set trailing exits? What do we do? How do we do it, uh, et cetera? So, um, oh, looks like I do have a couple of questions coming in now. So thank you for that. Um, so I'll be going through those in a lot more detail. Here is actually the schedule for that. You'll notice uh, I'll be in uh, KL for three days. I'll be down in JB for a day and also Penang for a day as well. So there's a number of different topics here. You'll notice developing a trading strategy, risk management. Um, there's a couple of private sessions. I'll be doing one on um, you know, trading habits and the trader psychology and all these different sessions. Um, and these are all being hosted and uh, conducted by Charter Prime, and it'll be fantastic to actually come and meet people for real and, and in person and actually conduct these sessions uh, for you. Um, obviously, Charter Prime is your location to find out more information about all these sessions. Uh, there are some discount codes and different prices at different times available to you. So there's some information there uh, on those. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and there's obviously various ways in which you can get information. Charter Prime is obviously a source for all that information. Um, let me just quickly go to the first question. I'll just read this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, very, <laughs> very good point. So the question was asked about time frame. So one of the things that I have done for many, many years with trading currencies, and I know I am not this is not this is not that common. Um, a lot of people don't do this. A lot of people think currencies are fast moving. I mean, look at all these numbers. Look at all these numbers over here. Um, well, I'm looking at MT4 at the moment, but all the numbers moving fast and they're all flashing and what have you. And and people think currencies are fast moving and things happen all the time. And and you really need to be looking at you know one minute charts or five minute or 15 minute charts to have any chance of you know, being successful and actually making money. And here I am, when I trade currencies, I trade on daily charts. 
and I only know of maybe three or four people, in all the traders that I know that actually trade currencies on daily charts, and I'm one of them. And um, I just think the beauty of daily charts is it provides you a bigger picture, a larger picture, and it slows everything down. It just slows everything down for you. So the question about scalping on lower time frames has lower risk versus on daily ch charts. Um, personally, and anecdotal evidence to me would suggest that trading on um, really, really low time frames is actually higher risk, much higher risk than trading on daily charts. And this is my personal opinion on this. Um, and that is when you go down to smaller time frames, firstly, I think the difficulty, the complexity or the difficulty to trade those time frames becomes more and more difficult. That's my personal opinion. And I personally, again, and we're all different, we all have different views on this, but I personally almost believe that trading on one minute charts is closer to gambling than it is trading. That's my personal opinion. I think you have a better chance of making money by going to a casino than trading on one minute charts. That's just my personal, that's just my personal opinion. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, so to answer your question, no, I believe daily charts presents lower risk. That's what I believe. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And one of the things that I talk about, so a couple more questions come through about time frame. Um, I don't have the slide or the presentation slide handy right this second, but in the topic on developing a trading strategy and also implementing the trading process, in those two presentations, I talk specifically on how to identify the best time frame for you. Again, I don't think it's a topic that's very well covered. People don't talk about you should trade this chart or this chart or trade one hour or four. It's almost people are left up to their own to choose which one they're gonna trade. And even worse, people then think they can trade all of them and use the same trading rules. And I don't think that's the case at all. In fact, I think that's a horrible way to trade. So in two of those presentations, um, what I actually do is provide you a very specific guidance and a, a process to work through to identify the best time frame for you. Um, and again, I don't think it's something that's very well covered and taught very often. And I do teach it and because I think it's important. Um, you need to identify your trading style and therefore your time frame and then focus right in on that particular time frame. Um, you should have no reason to run through the menu of different time frames and look at all these different charts. You should have no reason. You should really just focus on the time frame or the periodicity, chart periodicity for your particular trading style and your time frame. That's all you really need to do. Again, that's something I talk about um, as well. Uh, do you provide signals? Um, look, I'll talk about, I'll talk to Charter Prime about that separately. Um, but one thing I do do, as I said, is I'm quite open about um, I have two currency strategies and I'm actually very open about teaching uh, one of them and just letting you know what that is and the rules um, for that. So I'm actually quite open about whether the whether Charter Prime provides signals or is you know able to, uh, that's perhaps a discussion we can have separately and, and, uh, and let you know. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, so yeah, answering the time frame, it's probably best, um, you know, Perhaps another webinar in the future, I'll actually go through and talk about that in particular, or if you're able to attend the live sessions in two weeks time, then I'll certainly be talking about those and certainly be spending a lot of time on those. And of course, allowing you the opportunity to ask any questions uh, about that. Okay, any more questions? I'm uh, more than happy to answer them. Thank you very much for those who did ask a question. I really appreciate that. And certainly for those who are still hanging around, I certainly appreciate your time this evening and having a listen in uh, to this session and I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, uh, so another question about indicators. Um, we could talk about all the indicators. We can go to MT4 just like any other charting platform and talk about all the different indicators available. Um, you'll notice on the charts that I've been using tonight and these are very similar to what, what I use for real and that is some moving averages. I'll certainly occasionally use average true range, um, ATR, which is a measure of volatility. Um, I'll talk about that again. This is very much related to risk management and I'll talk about that in much greater detail 
um, in the live session, which goes for you know two two and a half hours. Um, so I'll certainly use that indicator, um, the ATR indicator. <clears throat> Excuse me. But so far as the other more commonly, you know, MACD or stochastic or RSI or unbalanced volume or directional movement or whatever else, um, I personally don't use any of those. I have very strong opinions uh, on why that's the case. Um, I'm very much just price action. Uh, I'm a very big believer on trends. I'm a huge believer on key levels, which is why you'll see uh, all the red lines on my charts here, um, because I believe in the importance of support and resistance when it comes to currency trading, but I certainly don't use uh, very many indicators other than what you have seen uh, here tonight. Well, again, I'm more than happy to hang around for any more questions, but for those who do wish to uh, call it an evening as we approach the end of the hour, again, I just wanted to extend uh, a very big thank you to all of you who have taken the time to not only register, but then also come back and attend the webinar this evening. I hopefully I've provided you some food for thought and excuse me, giving you some things to think about with risk management. Bearing in mind, tonight's really just a quick overview on a number of things with risk management, and we can go into much more detail at another time on this particular topic. So look, I really hope to meet some of you in two weeks time in one of the live sessions. Um, until then, uh, it's great to have your company this evening. All the best with your trading, and I uh, hope to see you again shortly. Thanks very much and good evening.